one day we had a magazine. Uh, it's, it's called Life in America. And it used to be a copy of Arabic one, but uh, very uh, beautiful uh, pictures and very nice uh, magazine. So I used to love it to, uh, to watch it. So I got it once time and I put it, uh, I started to watch, uh, to see the pictures and to read the articles there until I saw the Niagara Falls picture with the uh, triangle uh, of, uh, there were triangle uh, of flowers, uh, something like uh, 20 meters by 20 by 20, you know. Keep in mind we're five miles away from Niagara Falls, where we are. So yeah. this is all good. Yeah. We are in Buffalo, so it is about five miles from here. And I, I didn't know anybody in Buffalo or in America or anywhere. And then the, on one of the sides of the triangle, there was a, a, a girl, small girl, about uh, 20 years or something. He's talking like about a picture in the magazine. A picture is uh, in the picture. She was on a ride on a bike and facing uh, the camera from this side. And she's smiling to the picture. And she has a cavity. A tooth in her mouth, and it's giving her beauty, kind of beauty, extra than what she was. So I kept looking at her and I said, Wow, she's so beautiful. I wish I can marry one like that. No, 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 she's not Muslim. And they put the thing over the cupboard in order to, to, to be away from it, from thinking about this. And then after two days or so, they go and pick it up slowly and they start looking at it again and then I say no 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 she's not Muslim and they put it up and subhanallah it continues again and again for a few for a month or two months and then I, I said I forgot the whole thing I mean it was a childish way think about the uh, way of thinking yeah so I forget it then I started to continue in my life I faced a lot of incidents that were very close from distracting me from the religion completely when I had to be. By Allah's mercy. Allah, yani I'm, I'm saying this story because we have conclusion after that uh, later on. Uh, I wouldn't say it now, but later on. So it, I went through a lot of troubles and problems in my life and Allah used to pick me up from it pick me up from it by his mercy otherwise I would have been a really really bad person but alhamdulillah he saved me by his mercy and that's why I'm saying this lecture as a whole that we have to mention Allah's mercy on us we have to talk about these miracles that we passed through in our lives. So, until I came to the uh, high school, the 12th grade, and I kept falling in, in that year, you know, I didn't succeed in the 12th grade for four times, four years. Uh, not because I'm dumb, <laughs> But because I was lazy to study properly, I was distracted by the TV, which was starting in Egypt, and I was I used to hold the book and go to the living room where the TV is running, and I pretend that I'm holding the book in order to study, but I was watching the TV. They said, my grandfather, Allah, he said, please, you either to sit with us and watch or go away and study. I said, okay, okay, I'm just for a few seconds to see the news or, or to see this I I issue and stuff like that. So I didn't perform properly. So one day I was starting, I started to uh, read Quran uh, quarter a day, which is about 
two, three pages a day. So every day I read it and I put the Quran. And one day before the Ar uh, uh, it's one uh, eighth of the Juz. You know, the Quran is 30 Juz. Yes, that's about two, three pages. The Ruba means uh, one quarter, but actually it's one quarter from something called Hizb. The Juz is consisting of two Hizbs. So one over eight of the Juz, I read it in a day at that time. And then one year of those that I felt uh, in my uh, exam, the 12th grade, I put it, uh, I read until a certain mark of the Jews, uh, and I said, okay, I'm going to stop here and I'll go to pray, uh, I'll go to study the rest of the uh, month or the two months that are left for the exam in order to, I mean, to make use of my time more. What would it take from you, Mutarak, to, 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 to read one rubber a day? It wouldn't take from you 10 minutes or five minutes. But it, the, the devil is playing with us, you know, to distract us from doing the good deeds. So anyhow, I left it and I went to, through the studying the last month and then the month finished and the exam finished and we have a month until the results to come up and I said okay okay I'm taking just break one a few days together and then I'll start reading again and I used to go down in the street and play racket with the uh, uh, the young fellows of my age uh, from nine o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock in the evening. With uh, uh, everyone, he gets tired and he goes and I continue. And one day I said, oh, the, 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 the results of the exam is coming up. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't read. Ya Rabbi Salim, Ya Rabbi Salim. Oh, so I went, before the exams come, it was a tradition to you know start praying to Allah, and then of course he was there mm -hmm. with them. So yeah, so I went to 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 look for the results. The school is about uh, three hundred uh, meters away from our house at that time, and I said, "Oh Allah, please, if you make me succeed in this uh, year, I'll pray to Rakhat." thanking Allah, thanking you for what you have gave me. Although I am a sinner and I didn't perform in a decent way with my, in my relationship with you. So I went and I found myself falling. So I don't have to pray the Torah card that I made near to, to pray if um, success, succeed. So I went back home and everybody was upset for me to be uh, failing again. And I went, we used to pray in uh, the guest room that we uh, received the guests in. And after we finish, we go out and close the, do the, the room to keep it clean. So I went into the room and I said to myself, I don't pray to Rak'at thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, 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 the uh, success or uh, not to succeed in, in the uh, high school. Is it more important for my strength that Allah gave me in order to play racket the whole day from nine o'clock until nine in the evening with all this energy and health. And I don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this with two rak'at. Well, I am going to pray the two rak'at even though. And I started. So you were not sad? That you no, I was sad, so sad. Okay. And I was crying actually. And then I stood and they prayed 
and I was crying and crying and because it's, it wasn't it wasn't the first time to fail in that year. Mm. So I I said after the prayer, I said I said let me start reading again, and I opened at the mark that I left in the Quran. Wallahi, I swear, Allah, guys. Two and a half pages, starting from the point I was standing by. Two and a half pages. The end of Surah Al-Shura. Surah Al-Shura. The first ayah was, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ لِعِبَادِهِ الرِّزْقَ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرِ مَا يَشَاءُ إِنَّهُ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِيرٌ بَصِيرٌ The Arab people of you guys will understand what it is. But the Nowadays they don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, if Allah gives the people all what they want and there is with a, a huge quantity, they'll be unfair and they'll never follow the path around the meaning inshallah if you uh, uh, you get it and read the last two pages as if they came to Tariq Osman specifically oh Allah. I used to say oh Allah I believe in you I believe that you are here, but I want to see you I, 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 I love you but I want to see you and Allah answered me in this two pages that uh, uh, around the meaning that Allah would never talk to somebody except from behind hijab or he sends a messenger to teach the people something about what he wants to convey to them. So I said, Alhamdulillah, okay, okay, I accept now. As I consider that, that he already talked to me about it. Not only that, I used to say, oh Allah, please, if I get married one day, I don't want girls. Why? Because I'm worried that they may be bad girls, Allah, and then I'll be sad in my life. In my life. So I want boys only, Allah. <laughs> and Allah says in those two pages and now, he said, يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذكور أو يزوجهم ذكرانا وإناثا ويجعل من يشاء عقيما he, So Allah gives the, the man only girls and this is the first option that he selected in his speech subhanahu wa ta'ala يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَنْشَاءُ إِنَاثًا Only the, the girls. وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذكور. And some others only bo uh, uh, boys. And others, they get mixed boys and girls. And the last thing is وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا And he makes some people unable to get children even. Whatever they do, they cannot get children. So in another words, it's not your business to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me this or don't give me that. So I said, I understand the message. I'll accept whatever Allah gives. And when I get married and I got the, the delivery was going on in the hospital, my auntie was visiting us in Mecca. We were living in Mecca at that time. And she said, what do you want? A boy or a girl? A boy or a girl? I told her, no, I learned the lesson. It, it has to be what Allah wants, not what I want. She said, yeah, yeah, but what do you wish? I said, I wish what Allah wants to get, for me to get. And alhamdulillah, she was a girl. And I got married again. And I got another two girls. And I'm so happy with them. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So this is a miracle by itself. The, 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 the whole, I used to feel 
that uh, um, because I was weak boy, you know, kind of, so I used to love revenge, and I cannot do it. So I want to 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 revenge from some people who, some kids who used to hurt me sometimes. So I I I, I said to myself, whoever slapped me one slap, I want to slap him ten slaps. <laughs> and and then I found answer for that in these two pages. Wallahi, it's American, guys. American. That two and a half pages, all of them, if you read it, it's telling you what I used to think about the, the life and what Allah wants <laughs> in, about the life for a, a, a slave of him. So I used to say, I, I would like to slap him two slaps. And then, if someone hurts you with one head, you're supposed not to reply to him except with the same thing. But two or three or whatever you want, no, no. You have to be fair. And it was just say it and say it in the film. Only one. فمن عفا وأصلح whoever forgive and he do good deeds. The iman is three stages. About this issue. And to قابل الإساءة ب ب you face the the harness with it with the equal harness to the person who hurt you, or to forgive. How uh, forgive the the person and not to hurt him or not to revenge from him at all. I said, how come this is Allah's rule? Then the third one, Al-Ihsan. Al-Ihsan is to treat him in a merciful way, in a nice way, for the sake of Allah. And this is the highest iman when you, you, you hold your nerves and you don't revenge from the people who hurt you here or there. Not for everything, of course, but up to the the, the qisas, you know, if someone, Allah killed someone and he made uh, forgiveness and he made ihsan to him to, to be uh, good back to him instead of being a uh, revenger, uh, this by itself a uh, uh, good manner that Allah wants from uh, Abdullah. So, so you're going to come to the when you went to the masjid? Uh, yes, yes, it's coming. <laughs> so, at that age, in, 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 during that uh, these years, uh, I start. I start. Uh, we used to pray only Juma in the mosque with my family. But the prayers, the regular prayers, we used to pray it at home. So I grew up with this mentality. And then one day, I was staying the whole night playing dice, dice and stuff like that, you know, nonsense, wasting the whole night with my cousin until the fajr uh, comes. And then I say, okay, um, let us uh, pray, uh, let us go, uh, wait, uh, walk a little bit in the street until uh, the fajr is called, and then I will pray and then we go to sleep. He said, okay, he didn't pray at that time. So we went in the street and back and forth, and then when the Adan went that night, I said, subhanAllah, 
guy is saying, Hey, Allah Salah, Hey, Allah Salah. And I'm going to go back home to pray. And I'm here by the mosque. I thought, oh, Brahim, Brahim, let us go in and pray first. He said, no, no, you, you, you go, I'm waiting up out there. I went in and I prayed. Wallahi, guys, I came out very, very happy by Allah's mercy that I, I did that and I prayed in the mosque. So I said, I'm not going to cut it. I'll go again and again. And I started with the Fajr. <laughs> Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib, I didn't go in the beginning, but Fajr specifically, I used to go to pray Fajr in the mosque. Alhamdulillah. After a while, about a year or so, I said, okay, now I, I, I'm not going to go to pray. After I used to start praying other prayers in the mosque regularly also, uh, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll pray at home, like my family. And then, subhanAllah. Also in those years, times, it was two days. It was also kind of like a stereotype against people that would pray in the mosque, right? Yes, 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 yes. They, so, the people they used to accuse anybody who goes to pray in the mosque at that time in Egypt because of some crisis, political situation or something. And I was a kid, I didn't have any activities against anybody or till now, I don't have. So uh, they, uh, uh, they, they used to tell me, play in the house and at home and they do, do uh, study your uh, studies in order to succeed. And then one day after I decided that, and Allah, I swear to God, I said it in my heart without mentioning it to anybody. I even I didn't say it with a voice that I can hear myself. So it's in my heart, and nobody knows it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then my auntie was living in front of us on the road, the same road, and she used to see me sometimes going to the mosque at Fajr, sometimes not every day, but and she waved me and I waved to her. And after two days from my decision, which I didn't talk to anybody about it, I found her coming. Where is this boy Tarak? Where is this boy Tarak? I said, No, yes, auntie. She said, did you stop going to the mosque? I said, what? Why are you are saying that? Because you didn't see me for a day or two from the window? She said, no, I am telling you, ask, answer me quickly. I said, yes, okay, yes, I did. She said, oh, son, don't stop that. Go back to pray in the mosque. I said, inshallah, I'll do it. But tell me why. She said, I saw you a dream. And this dream is that she saw in the, in the dream that there is a message coming from the sky. And she felt that it is from God subhanahu wa ta'ala to so and so specifically. It's clay, uh, clay two pages, and, and the right page, all is complaining about Tariq's manners. The whole page complaining about Tariq's manners. I said, what are they? I said, I remember nothing from them. But I knew that this, is, this page is all complaining about your manners. I said, oh, well, thank you. And then the rest the, the left page, all of it, ila baytilna, ila baytilna, ila baytilna, ila baytilna, ila baytilna, all the way down to the base. I said, I, I'll never cut it. I'll never cut it. I'll be praying in the mosque the rest of my life, inshallah, unless something stop me by force. So, subhanallah, I started to pray in the mosque again. 
after about two years from that, I got up, uh, I got fed up of living in Egypt. I said, I have to go out of this country. I want to go out. My father came to Buffalo here to live here and to work here. And uh, I didn't know that uh, Niagara Falls is by Buffalo. But I want to go with him to the States. I said, I'm going. He was coming to Jordan. And they wanted to go from Egypt to Jordan. I tell him, take me with you. So I took the money for the uh, plane to go to Jordan. And I said, let me make Umrah before I go to America. I may not be able to come to see the holy places or to pray in the mosque or to make hajj or something. So let me go and make Umrah and then go up on, by taxi until the um, man, uh, Jordan, and uh, then I go with him. So I came to, to, to uh, Sudan via the, uh, the, the Nile and the, the, the uh, the, the, uh, the, the Sudan until the sea, the Red Sea. The Red sea. And at the Red Sea, I came and I said, I want to book a ticket to Jeddah. I have a visa for, the, and they said, look, and they said, no, you have only two days and the visa will be expired and then you cannot go. I said, okay, so book me a ticket. And here is the money. I have Saudi reals to pay with. They said, no, we don't accept that. We want either dollars or uh, or uh, sterling uh, pounds. So I said, okay. I, I went to the bank and I told them, please transfer me, uh, convert me in some of these Saudi reals to uh, dollars. They said, no, we cannot do that from here. Our bank is very simple. You have to go all the way to Khartoum, the capital. Khartoum, 24 hours traveling in a train. If you sit in it, you cannot see in the beginning of the car, of the, the, the car that, of the train that you are in from the dust that is like clouds inside the, the, the train. It's very tough. Uh, uh, traveling in that uh, room. So I started uh, to cry. I said, what's going on? Am I stuck here? And then they told me, the, the, the one guy who was there, he saw me and he said, listen, brother. He talked in a tough way. He said, listen, brother, I cannot help you, but Go to my brother. Here it is. This is the his address in in the downtown in uh, Port Sudan, and he may be able to help you with this. And only what, the money that is left, about one pound, one Sudani pound or less, in order to com complete in dollars or in sterling, the, my ticket value. So I said, okay, thank you. And I went to the guy. He said, okay, stay here. And he went and he kept spinning around. And the next day, he got me the ticket to the airport. He paid it. So I said, okay, here is the money. Please take it while we were in the car towards the airport. I said, please take the money, that uh, the value of the ticket. He said, no, 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 no. Just when you go there, make dua for us. I said, what? It's a plain ticket and you want me? At that time, you know, 13 uh, Sudani pound, yani it is a big deal. So I said, no, 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 you have to take it. He said, no. Nah. He insists only to make dua for him. May Allah bless him, Ya Rabbi, and bless you all guys and guide us to the best. I went to and I met the Umrah. I stayed there three days. My uncle was the first 
uh, doctor for the animals, uh, what they call him, veterinarian. So uh, he got, uh, he, he helped me and he, he made, he made me to make tawaf lura. And while I'm going out of this tawaf lura, I said, oh Allah, I stopped crying. I started to cry. And I said, oh Allah, I wish if I can come here and live here the rest of my life. Ya Allah, please, please. And I cry and cry. And I said, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. I didn't say the words that I want to come here and this. I said it in my heart. And then I went on the way until the Jordan and the, 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 the guy, uh, the, the, I met my father there and he said, uh, okay, if you come with me to America, they may take you to fight in uh, Vietnam. I said, what, Vietnam? <laughs> if I want to fight, I would go to fight with my country against the, the, the Israel or something like that, but not to to the far edge of the earth <laughs> in order to to die or useless to be useless killed. No, no, no. I will. he said, okay. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I said I heard that. Copenhagen, Denmark, they have a lot of jobs for the people. So if you give me a visa to Copenhagen, I would appreciate it. He said, here it is, yalla. And he took me and the, we went to, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, to Beirut. He went to the States and they went to Copenhagen. Which is what, somewhere in Denmark? Europe? Denmark, Denmark. 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 So I stayed there for about five months and so. During that period, I couldn't bear living there as a you know, 20 years old. And I used to work in one time in a factory for, uh, you know, this, uh, black uh, discs that they run uh, music. Uh, the vinyl CDs, I think they're called, vinyl records. Yeah, the, 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 old, the ones that they had in the 70s. In the, 70s. The, the 50s as well. Okay, so the, there is a line of protection passing uh, through a big uh, room and the the the, uh, the records are going on that uh, uh, belt, and each uh, each one of the labors who are sitting on both sides do something in it, do something in it, and it goes to the other one until it go at the end, it's completed. Then a person would take the uh, the uh, thing and run a music to test the thing, the machine. The machine with the music, when running, it's running, all the women that are sitting on the table, at the table, they were almost dancing while they are listening to the uh, uh, music. And of course, it, it was a very distracting view for me and I kept asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to distract me with these people. So I said finally after I got fed up of living in uh, Berlin, I was in Berlin and I stayed one month only in Copenhagen and then I came back to Berlin. When I was when I was in Egypt I forgot to tell you about this another miracle. Uh, when I was in Egypt, I said, uh, I, I read the Surah Yusuf and I say, wow, how come this guy, he comes to a lady who's 
very beautiful and very rich and 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 he said i fear allah i cannot imagine how can a person young fellow and to do that easily like that oh allah please let me do and face something like that and behave like that because i couldn't imagine that i would be able to survive in such incident but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yes oh allah please please don't make me the, uh, yani, uh, to do a sin so when i went in denmark and one day i was uh, sitting in the garden waiting the people i was staying with them and they fell asleep on the, on the couch and then uh, a lady came and said why you are sleeping here like this i said uh, uh, i'm waiting my uh, colleagues to go and stay with them and uh, I'm a tourist here and she asked yani, what are you doing here okay I said I'm a tourist here and I want to look for a job she said okay uh, do you have money yani, do you have money I would like to con- contribute to you some money I said no 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 thanks I I, I couldn't imagine that I would take money from foreigner person like that for no uh, value yani, without any job or anything and then she said okay you don't want this okay come uh, can you come and wash my car and uh, help me in my garden and i'll pay you i said i'll come to do to help you as you pretended to help me with my visa to change it into working visa rather than the uh, uh, visiting visa. So I would appreciate it. I, I am ready to help you without uh, anything. She said, no, I cannot uh, let somebody come and help me and w- without paying him. So she told me, go and uh, to, to so-and-so in the immigration office and tell him I'm coming from lady so and so and then i'll uh, he may help you to get uh, to change your status in denmark and i went and he said you misunderstand you have a visiting a visiting visa you have to go out and then to come back with uh, when you have an offer to work so i went to that over it doesn't happen and she said Okay, and she said, she was at that day, she was in her house and they went to her house and she was wearing clothes that are really uh, attractive, astaghfirullah, house clothes, yani, and I, I, I was so upset and I want to escape from this position, uh, situation. And uh, she said, I'm an old girl. She was older than me and of course a wife. And then she said, I am an old girl. So I said, oh, that's the one I asked Allah for. I asked about to, to stand like what Yusuf did. And here you go. Are you going to, and I know that these people over there, they are very immodest about uh, sex. So I, I said, you know, there is hadith from the Prophet وسلم, you know, you see me praying in the garden i said she said yes i said e, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and they translate the hadith for those who may not know this hadith uh, a woman would be married uh, for four reasons either for her beauty or for her money or for her uh, noble uh, links of family or for her religion you win yourself by having the religious one you are saved so i translate that and she said oh okay 
Okay, you know that uh, if the foreigners comes to the, the uh, Copenhagen and uh, they uh, stay here, they make uh, troubles and then they, 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 they make uh, war in our country and stuff like that. So we cannot help. I said, okay, thank you. Alhamdulillah, it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve me from that position. And Alhamdulillah, I went without falling in such problem. And this was a miracle. And it was implying to what I said initially when I was in Egypt. And I said, how can a person do such thing? And Allah made me to stand in such position and to act in a decent way, alhamdulillah, by, Allah, by his mercy. And then I went to Berlin and then I couldn't stand there. And I said, okay, I'm going for Hajj. The people I got to know, Egyptian fellows, they were with me in the hotel. They said, you are crazy. The money you have, 500, uh, 520 uh, marks, it, if it drops you to Hajj, you may not have enough money even to go to back to Egypt. And I said, whatever Allah gives is the best. I am going. When a person is migrating for Allah's sake, he's going to take care of me. That's the, the, the conclusion of this hadith. So I went. I went by plane from Berlin to uh, uh, Amman. I know nobody in Amman. And I went to the embassy, Saudi embassy, to take a visa for Hajj. And it has about five days or four days until Hajj until the day of Arafat. So I found the, the, the fence, the <coughs> flesh fence. All the old people and young people are holding the fence and causing another cover for the fence, begging to get in to take a visa. I said, Allah, how am I going to get the visa from you? So I went and I prayed in the mosque and I was praying and accidentally someone came and prayed next to me. This guy, Allah sent him to me. He said, after the prayer, he said, is the brother from Egypt? I said, yes. He said, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan, you are very welcome. And, and yeah. He said, I, I love the, the Egyptians. I love the Egyptians. Just like that. He said, no, thank you very much. And I started to tell him, and he, he talked to me, and I started to tell him about my uh, story. And then he said, you know, I have an uncle who works inside the embassy of Saudi Arabia. Let us go and get into the embassy through him. And Allah, guys, Allah made it true. I went with him and we went into the embassy. And then, see, the miracles over miracles, yani, I'm saying this to, to understand how far a person would step one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how far he comes to him more than what he started with. So uh, we went in and the, 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 the consul who was going to give me the visa, supposedly, he looked at me and he said, I cannot. Yani, you have only four days, and five days before Hajj, we closed the Hajj visas completely. So I cannot give you a visa, by all means. I told him, OK, my uncle is a vet in, in Saudi Arabia, and uh, yani I would like to take a visa, visiting visa to him in order to perform the Hajj. He, he said, he looked like this and he said, okay, 
I tell you something. If you get me a recommendation from the Egyptian embassy in Amman, I'll give you the visa. I said, okay. And I ran out and I took Brother Ahmed that I knew with me to the embassy. And I remember while we are going, I remember that my uncle told me that my uncle is almost, he's older than me, six years. So I call him by his name. I said, he told me once before, there is a friend of mine. Before this incident completely, he was telling me about a friend of him that he was working in the, Amer- the Egyptian embassy in Amman. And his name, Wa'il or Walid. I don't remember. And I didn't remember at that time either his name. Is it this or that? So we were, I went there and I said, is there a person called Wa'il or Walid from uh, uh, Ma'adi, from place so and so in Egypt? He said, oh yeah, yeah, we have one. I said, can I talk to him please? He said, okay, here you go. And they called him. I found him in, older than me, a little bit like my uncle. And I said, do you know Salah al He said, yes, I know. He said, I'm his ne- nephew. And my situation is this, 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 this. He laughed. And he said, I'm a very small employee in the embassy. I cannot help you with anything serious. All what I can do to you to introduce you to the second uh, consul of the embassy and from you to him, uh, God helps you. I said, okay. So we went to the consul. And I told him the story. And they said, I'm coming for Hajj. So please, can you give me a recommendation? To, to the Saudi embassy in order to give me a visa, uh, a visiting visa to my uncle over there. He said, why don't you leave it until next year? I said, I don't have money to leave it <laughs> until next year here. So please, and I started to cry. I said, okay, okay. And he took a card of his personal, personal uh, card. But it, it says that he is the secretary of the embassy. So, and he wrote on the back, please, if you can help him, I would appreciate it. If you can help him. In other words, if you don't want, forget it. So he, he wants to give them a chance to say no and not to embarrass himself with them. So I took it and I ran back to the embassy, to the, Egyptian, uh, to the Saudi embassy, and I gave it to them. So the guy looked at like this and he said, okay, tick, 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 then the visa gold. I took it and they ran to the embassy, the Egyptian embassy, and they told them, here you go, I got it. He, the, the guy, he, he was so excited and so happy. And he said, please, please, when you go, make the hat for me. I said, of course, without saying that, I'll make the hat for you. And then I flew. I, I took a uh, taxis all the way to Mecca and alhamdulillah I performed Hajj. At Hajj. The big, big mercy that Allah gave me in that story. I went for Hajj and they walked from Mina to Arafat and from Arafat back to Mina and then I was sitting on, on the, after I threw the stones, the first day of the feast, and I said to shave my hair. And on a chair on the road, kid. The, the people that are mean, going, means like this. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for using some Arabic words sometimes. So uh, the, I was sitting on a chair and the people, uh, the hajis are going through, uh, around the big uh, stone of the devil to shoot and going uh, uh, back to their camps. And I was sitting uh, doing my hair and I looked in, in, 
in between those people. And suddenly, in a second, I saw my grandfather, my mom's father, walking in front of me. I said, what, what, what? this is my grandfather. And I, I, I just kicked out the, the, <laughs> the, the guys the, uh, who was shaving my head. I kicked his hand, and they ran in, into the crowd, and they held him before I lose him. And I said, Ida, Ida, what's that? What's that? How did you come here? He, they know that I'm in Berlin. What? How did I come here? And I was, I know that they are in Egypt. How did they come here? So I said, I, I just came to Hajj. And he said, okay, and while I'm giving a hug to him, I saw my auntie who saw me the dream. I saw her behind him. So I left him and they was giving her a hug and kissing her. And while I'm say, uh, giving her salam, I found my mom behind her too. And subhanAllah, my mom said, Wallahi Tariq, I just was thinking about you that when you came to make Umrah before you went to Europe, have you been to this area of the holy uh, Hajj? and to, to, to see the details of the Hajj or not. I said, here am I, and Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us that. What's happening, what happened with you guys? They said, we came from one month, and we are working as teachers, me and my sister, my, your auntie, and your grandfather is our mahram. You know what is mahram? You know uh, so the blood relation, like your grandfather and mother. Yeah. So in Saudi Arabia, they have a rule that the women they have to be with a mahram, meaning according to many of the Sharia rules. Yeah. So I, I, I they said that we came from one month only, and the Hajj came, so we came to perform Hajj. The that crowd that I found them in, if if I was. If I wasn't paying attention and I am doing like this for the guy to cut the hair, they could have passed from my side and I would never saw them. But what happened that I was looking at the same moment they passed. And subhanAllah, I jumped and they caught them before they I missed them. This was a big thing, yani, that I don't, the money is finishing for me, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do after that. By Allah's mercy, I uh, went to, uh, to the immigration office there with my uncle after he came back from Hajj, and we went to do the extended visa, uh, visiting visa in order to be able to go and sit uh, one month with my mom and my auntie and my grandfather. So they gave me one uh, month extra. And I went with them to the city that they used to work in, which is uh, Abha. It's all the way up the mountains. And it's very far, about 600 kilometers from Mecca. We stayed there until the month finished. And then, and then I went to the immigration office over there and I said, please, I want another extension for another month. The, the head of the immigration office said, who gave you this extension before? He was wrong to do that. And here is two weeks red visa only to deport within two weeks. So I started to cry and said, SubhanAllah, what am I going to do? And then I came, I came out, while I'm coming out, one soldier came to me and he said, brother, brother, he said, yes, he said, go to Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, 
and ask for uh, Prince uh, uh, Naif Ibn Abdul Aziz. He is the second man in the internal affairs uh, minister. So, uh, and apply for him uh, that you want to be uh, company with your mom in your iqam, in her iqam. I said, uh, how am I going to go to Riyadh? It's 500 Riyadh to go. Yes. And she, my mom said, go, go, go. Here is the 500 book ticket, flight ticket, back and forth to, uh, to Riyadh. I went there, and subhanAllah, you know, I was in the mosque. And I, I went to, I uh, tried to apply to him at his house after I asked where he's, he's living. And I uh, gave him the paper I wrote on it, my story, short, one page. Again. And then he said, come meet me in the uh, uh, office. I said, okay, I flew in, in a uh, uh, white uh, the, the, the truck for the, white, uh, the water, you know, that delivers water, huge truck, uh, all the way downtown. I went to the, uh, the office and I found a lot of people, about 50 people sitting, waiting the prince to come in order to give them their needs, you know, their applications. So I came and they gave him my application after I gave my turn. And he read it quickly and he said, you are 21 years old and your mother is supporting you. And I looked at him and I said, SubhanAllah, I mean, why you are accusing me about it? In myself. And I was thinking for a second that I would tell him, okay, forget it. And I turn my face and go away. Allah is subhanAllah. And then he felt that he break my heart by saying this expression. So he felt embarrassed and he wrote, give him iqama, settling visa with his mother. I said, SubhanAllah. I said, what about the red uh, stamp of departure? I said, so and so. I said, Nam. I said, give him, uh, tell them, tell them uh, to uh, send the telegram to the immigration of the Abha to cancel that uh, uh, red visa. I said, Jazakallah khairan. And I went, I went out. I was praying in the mosque and I found two guys, students are sitting in the mosque after the prayer and they talked to me. I told them my story and they were so excited about my story that I met my mom and stuff like that. And they said, okay. They went and they told their teacher who was living upstairs of them and they told him an Egyptian young fellow is happened with him, this, 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 this. So he said, bring him, bring him, let me see him. So I went and I saw him. And he said, okay, uh, I want you to come with me tomorrow to the, uh, uh, to where I work, which is the organization for the boys uh, education center. And I went with him the next day. And while we are getting up on the stairs, I found a, a cheese guy, with, with, you know, coming down and a lot of people around him trying to talk to him, you know, in a very serious way. And so the, Mr. Said, he put me back Kenan, in order to give him path to go in front of us. And then he stopped him. He said, uh, Sheikh, he said, yes. He said, I want to introduce uh, this uh, Egyptian brother who is named Tariq Osman. And, uh, he's coming from 
Berlin and he met his mother in Hajjah very quickly. Came. So the guy smiled and he put, he put eyes to eyes contact with me. And he, he said, yes, I know him. I said, what, you know me? I never saw you, I never know you, I never even know your name. And you, you say, you know me? He said, yes. I didn't say to him that, but I said, you know me? From where? He said, isn't you the one, aren't you the one who wrote a letter with a bad handwriting to King Faisal? I, 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 didn't, I didn't say that. that you didn't that's say right. that, but you can say uh, that. Okay. I, I, while I was in Berlin, I sent a, a letter to King Faisal and I told him, I, uh, I want to, uh, to come and live uh, with my mom and my two brothers in Mecca and to study, to complete our studies. And I, my, my mom is who, the one who is supporting us. So I wish if we can get the visa to work for work for my mom and we'll be studying in the schools. And then he didn't answer. So I said, the king, how would he uh, come to answer such a person I mean, he doesn't know? So the guy by, in Riyadh, excuse me, the guy in Riyadh uh, at the, the stairs of the building, he said, Yes, I know you. Aren't you the one who wrote the, to King Faisal a letter in a hand in a bad handwriting and ask him for uh, uh, coming to work here, your mom? I said yes. Subhanallah. I said Subhanallah. As if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants me to come and to meet. This guy, not as if it was like that. Yani, why did I saw those two brothers and they took me to their teacher and their teacher took me to this place and I met this guy who is a consultant for King Faisal. When he received my letter, he called him because he is originally Egyptian and he told him, can, shall we get this guy and his mom and his brothers uh, to, to live here and to work here? He said, I don't know them. He said, I don't know them. So, of course, King Faisal didn't care about it after that. Yeah, if, if one of the Egyptians in his court and he's a consultant and he says, I don't know him, forget it. So, Allah sent me to see, to see this guy specifically on the stairs as if Allah is telling him, you didn't bring him, I bring him. Subhanallah. Wallahi subhanallah. <laughs> so it was a big miracle. Subhanallah. And then I took myself and I went back to Abha. Abha is about 600 kilometers from Mecca. And then the, the, the vacation of the summer came and they went, uh, the, the whole family went back to uh, Egypt and I stayed there. I said, I want to stay here. I have a camera now, I will stay here until you come back from Egypt. And then at the end of the summer vacation, she sent me a telegram, my mom, and she said, our work is transferred to Mecca in Karama, to Mecca. So we have to go to Mecca. Come and meet me in, uh, in Jeddah. So I flew back to Jeddah and I was able to go with her and to live in Mecca before a year completed for exactly a year plus or minus days. And we were settling in Mecca for eight years. By Allah's mercy and subhanallah al 
I, I took my 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 uh, I took my twelfth uh, uh, grade uh, diploma from Mecca after we lived for eight years in Mecca by Allah's mercy. Allah, it was a fantastic thing, fantastic thing. Miracles, for, for miracles, over miracles. How can I يعني, imagine how I met my mom without an appointment in a place if we get to, if we are two and we get distracted from each other in the crowd of the Hajj, we cannot meet again until we go to the compound that we are living in. And then, not only that, but I met all these people step by step that they helped me until I got the visa. And subhanAllah, I lived there until I took my bachelor's degree from King Abdulaziz University. Uh, alhamdulillah, in math and computer science. And then after that, I went to, I came to America. To Buffalo. My father made me uh, uh, immigration and I came and I lived in Buffalo here for two and a half years. By the way, do you I know get, that uh, uh, Mawlana also came to your house? You yes, Mawlana, he was here. No, you know, Buffalo didn't... is the place for those people that know this part of history or don't. But uh, Mawlana Mududi died in Buffalo. Yes. And his janaza was led by my sheikh, uh, uh, Dr. Sir Ahmed, our teacher. He uh, was one of the people who led his janaza yes, over uh, here. Uh, Even uh, though he's buried in Pakistan, they took his grave to Pakistan. Uh, and he died here. He died here, yes. yes. I remember that. Yes. yes. Those of you are young, those of you are young, but one of the, you know, the very big Islamic movements. We have like Tabligh Jama'at Tabligh, everybody knows that. Yes. Yes. We have Ikhwan al Muslimin. We know uh, if everybody knows of Ikhwan. These are some of these brothers are young; they may not know. But Ikhwan was a very powerful movement at one time. Yes, yeah. and uh, and then uh, one of the other very well-known movements, especially in the Muslims in India, Pakistan, from this area, was an organization called Jamaat Islam. Uh, uh, and these organizations, uh, not from the Jamaat. But uh, Ikhwan and Jamaat Islam, because they were, uh, you know, uh, Sayyid Qutb and Mawdudi were both journalists and they were both uh, yeah. exchanging information. And so they were both interested in establishing Islamic state. Uh, I don't know if he get, came and visited us because he was, when I came, he was so sick. Yeah. But his son, he was a doctor here. He's, I think, still here. Doctor, he may be, yeah. Uh, he may. Are you right? Uh, yeah. He, he was 19, a friend 94. of my father. Oh, okay. okay. He, he used to communicate with my father in the most of Parker. I heard he came to your house. And he He's came. He's the one who convinced your dad to leave Riba. To eh? Leave Riba. Leave Riba. Oh. And yeah. he told him to pay it off quickly and, uh, and then. So uh, yeah, about uh, this. Yes. Yes. And my, then. My and then and anyway, so, yeah. uh, but it, it's interesting how even I'm here yep. in yep. Buffalo, Alhamdulillah. where Alhamdulillah. You know, some of our teachers. Yes, yes. Subhanallah. So, subhanallah, I came here and uh, I, uh, I applied for a PhD here in uh, UB and I started to study and to work as well for the PhD. And then it was too tough at that time with me because I had uh, a family and uh, my wife was a Syrian. I married her from uh, Mecca. One thing I want to say, yeah. if you don't mind, no, I lived in Saudi Arabia, my family. Yes, yes. In, in the 80s. Yes, yes. Okay? And I can tell you there was so much bark at that time. Yep. Yep. In, in the, nowadays, it's not the same at all. It's not okay. the same. Even though, no. yes, yeah, I mean, they, no, they had their the issues, but still, the normal human being, the life, the daily life of the Muslims in Saudi Arabia was kind of very beautiful. Because, no, no. Yes. yes. You know, uh, people were religious and, 
people God, wanted the need. More, more kind than nowadays, let us say it this way. Yeah, now it's much more kind. Watched my last, I think my last video, I talked about the unemployment of Saudi Arabia and how nobody wants oil in this COVID situation. So that's making Saudi Arabia go bankrupt. And mm -hmm. I'm pointing out like 10 graphs uh, looking at Saudi Arabia and the situation. I don't know how many of you people saw that video, but Saudi Arabia is in a difficult situation right now. Yeah. Especially now with its friendship with uh, the state of Israel. So it's, you know, gone too far. Yeah, So subhanAllah, I mean, it was a big mercy. We were, uh, I, I married uh, a Syrian uh, lady from Syria who was a teacher with my mom in Mecca. And then uh, God gave me uh, Maryam, which is the oldest girl I have, uh, in, the, in a day of one of the feasts of Hajj, subhanAllah. And uh, after that, she grew up and we, uh, after I finished, I went, to the, I came to the States and I apply for them, for the wife and uh, my daughter to come as migrants to the States. They came and when, when they came, uh, we lived about eight months together in Buffalo here. And then I, uh, I, took, uh, I got uh, an offer to work in Saudi Arabia for uh, in the university that I graduated from. The teachers, my teachers who were there, they saw me and they loved me, alhamdulillah. They used them, may Allah give them mercy who died from them. And uh, I, said, I called them on the phone and they said, please, I want to come and work in the university with you guys. So they, my teacher laughed and he said, well, why did you go in the first place? I said, because I, I didn't have enough experience to work with you guys. Now after I came here and I worked as a student consultant in the UB for two and a half years. So Alhamdulillah, I got the experience enough to go back and to work as a system analyst in uh, Jeddah and King Abdulaziz University. So, uh, Subhanallah. After that, I uh, I got some problems with my wife, and we separated it over there in Jeddah. And I used to come back and forth between Jeddah and uh, Buffalo in order to keep on my immigration status. And one time I came and I was coming to Parker Street Mosque here with my cousin's husband. And uh, he said, uh, we were coming in and there were uh, uh, a lady coming with her car. Uh, she stopped the car and she came with her child, eight years old. And she's coming into the mosque with hijab. So I said, who, who is this lady? I didn't see her before. I, he said, he smiled and he said, we are waiting for you. I said, what? What do you mean? I understood, he, I understand that he knows that I was thinking about getting married again because of unpleasant marriage previous. So, I said, what's going on, what's going on? He said, come, let us go into the mosque and pray first before I talk about such thing. I said, okay, okay, you are right. And then we went in. And after a while, after we finished the Juma prayer, he called her, they called her, two of them, uh, the brothers there. And they said, uh, they talked to her while I'm sitting in between them. And they tried to get me to see her and she to see me. But they didn't tell her yet that I'm interested in getting married. And she's divorced and uh, she has a girl and a boy. The boy is eight years and 
the girl is uh, uh, older than that. So I said, Subhanallah. And in a, in a very long way, I get married to her. And she's from Buffalo here. And I went with her one day after Allah gave us Khadija and Fatima, two girls. And then one time we came to here and they went with them, take them to as a picnic to Niagara Falls. When I was uh, uh, running with them, and suddenly we came to the triangle of the flowers in Niagara Falls, where I saw the picture of the girl from 25 years ago. Oh my, 25 years ago. I saw it and SubhanAllah, I said, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, with a loud voice like this, SubhanAllah. She said, what, 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 what's going on? I said, I'll tell you the story, I'll tell you the story. The story is this, 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 this. And after 25 years, Allah gave me you, and she has a, a tooth that is, she has cavity tooth, and she's giving, it's giving her this kind of beauty. And I said, SubhanAllah, <laughs> from where? From uh, the, the, the area of Niagara Falls, SubhanAllah. And she's younger than me, two years, not like that one. <laughs> For those of you that missed it, when he was younger, maybe eight years old, he had a magazine with a picture of Niagara Falls and a beautiful mm -hmm. lady sitting by this flower area. Girl, girl. So now he found after 25 years, 25 years that he's that there Allah standing with his wife me there, you know, a Caucasian lady. And so, after 25 years from seeing the magazine, and they say, no, no, she's not Muslim, and they put it up. <laughs> and then 25 years, and then Allah gave me one who is Muslim, and mashallah, yani, I, I, yani, alhamdulillah, I loved her a lot, and we were living all these 33 years ago together until the poor thing, she started to have Alzheimer now. And we just, from three weeks, we put her in uh, how, uh, nursing house in uh, Iowa, where I'm coming to live here in Iowa, but I'm visiting here, uh, my family here, SubhanAllah. So SubhanAllah, if you see how the miracles of all these incidents that happened and the mercy that Allah gives, it didn't come immediately after each other, no, it came slowly and slowly according to Allah's plan, who knows when to send this miracle, when to send that miracle, and to whom? To a person who is a sinner. He is not a perfect one from his childhood. No, I used to have sins. But Allah knows, يعني, my heart was hanging, hanging, with Mecca and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahab. And the, I used to say, when I was young, I used to say, oh Allah, please, oh Allah, please, uh, when we read Al-Fatiha, I don't know if somebody was attending the Mawdu uh, Al-Fatiha before. Al-Fatiha, it's, it's, if you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, Hamidani Abdi, my slave, thank me. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the merciful, the merciful and uh, 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 the, the compassion of uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So He says, Athna Ari Abdi means Allah, uh, the, my slave is appreciating me. Malik Yawm Al Din. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the day of judgment, not owner of this life, no, over the, the whole universe at the day of judgment. Maliki Yawm al You will, and Majjadani uh, Abdi. So the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majjadani Abdi means He gave me glory. 
he's saying the glory that he gloried me. And then some people they may say and their thoughts are in the, in the car the new car I want to buy in the children in the food the dinner today what it is and we don't follow the meaning of the fatha that we are reading and this is very important in our life this is يعني, the beginning of the the the, the follow-up after the miracles i said i i uh, told you my stories that subhanallah how far the slave is honest when he says we worship you and when we refer we refer to you only and Allah says and this between me and my slave and for my slave whatever he asked for and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his mercy he didn't leave the dua for the slave to say, oh, Allah, give me this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. No, 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 no. He gave him the dua that he's supposed to say. This is the best dua in our life. Three categories of people in this version, in this expression. Those who are your generosity, generosity is covering them by being guided on the past. Like whom? The Prophet and the Sahaba. Why? Because uh, the, 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 the Prophet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat min nas. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat min nas. You were, he's talking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahab. You were the best generation ever come up for the humanity that Allah said you for the humanity. So this is the best generation that will be in Jannah. So غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين who are the مغضوب عليهم who are الضالين مغضوب عليهم those who Allah gave them book Torah and they fiddle it around this way and that way and they didn't care about it or about studying it until they lost the, the holy book so Allah غضب عليهم غضب عليهم يعني what it means, it means that Allah was upset from them and kicked them from his mercy except the good believers among them who are few, relatively. So, um, can we finish with Dua? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us. Do dua for all of us, inshallah. Yes, yes, inshallah, inshallah. Okay. Those, the Jews who lost the book, والضالين, and not the dalin, uh, the misled on the path. You talk to any Christian, most of the Christian, even if he said, even if he say, if he say most of them, not all of them, but most of them, if you if you tell them something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
they يعني they listen in a in a good way but some the most the most of them are believer inside their heart but they don't know what is the right path and inshallah i'll give brother uh, umar two or three uh, videos from three people who became muslims and they are complaining where are the muslims they didn't come to tell us what is islam and the lady was crying yesterday i just got the thing and she she held the, the, the quran on to her face and she started to cry after she is an old old lady and she said how come where are you guys you didn't come to tell us what is right and what's wrong alhamdulillah that i was safe but what about the others on the other hand the 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 the, the other ones the non-believers i have a full lecture about them how to convince them scientifically with the physics and the math that there is a creator for that universe that you cannot imagine his power and you have to be believer he is the one who created us and they have to prove it for them i have a proof which is wonderful inshallah uh, brother umar will record it and will put it online as well it's a, a, a lecture of two hours about Uh, the creation of the uh, everything and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, a ability to do whatever he wants and he can destroy all of us and the whole universe very briefly that in uh, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says inna al-ard wa ma 'alayha la tusawi 'inda Allah janah ba'udha The, the the earth and whatever on it it's not equal even to a mosquitoes mosquitoes wing can you imagine and yani i'll prove that it is very true from 1400 years he said that and it is true but then another thing the the final thing it's that inna allah it's quran in allah yumsiku samawati wal ard an tazula wa in zalata in amsakahuma min ahad min ba'd that the earth the skies and all the objects in the universe are consisting from certain materials that we know in physics allah is holding each each atom atom not to vanish if it vanish they will and all the uh, atoms that are in the universe which you cannot imagine even how much the galaxy the the the, the earth in the galaxy it's nothing the galaxy among the galaxies that are scattered in the universe it's nothing subhanallah subhanallah fa so the 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 the, per, the person if he understand that and how great allah is and he is holding all these atoms in the universe not in the, on the earth not in your eye not in his skin it's the whole universe he is holding them from getting demolished and you can take two minutes uh because i don't want the memory of my computer to <laughs> to, to be <laughs> yeah. so okay if you can explain how you beautifully explained how each atom should not be holding together yes yes right? okay Play every it, atom it, shouldn't it. be holding Play together it. okay do that before the, you are. the the new uh, the nuclear the nuclear of the, the atom you know the atom is a nuclear and orbits of electrons the nuclear have positrons positrons are particles very tiny particles inside the atom that are all positive 
positive, positive together, held in the 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 atom. If they are two, then they are uh, like the uh, hydrogen as example one. So it's hydrogen. Two is oxygen. So and so on. You know until the uranium. 300 something positrons inside well, the 200 something all these positives are like like the magnets you know if you put north with north of a magnet what will happen it will they'll kick each other quickly unless you hold them hold them in a very tough way and you will be uneasy holding them even and the moment you just relieve them, they divert from each other. They are not, they are not humans to do that. But the electricity on them, it's forcing them to push each other away from each other. Because positive and positive, negative and negative. And subhanAllah. I'm sure you all know this, positive and positive repel, and negative and negative repel. Yes. So in the atom, when you have a lot of protons that are all positive, they should be repelling, but they're exactly. not. But they are not. And that's in one atom. In one atom. How many atoms in the whole universe? In the whole universe. Please try to imagine. It's something unimaginable. Not uncountable. It's unimaginable for our brains or for our computers even. I'm sure that no computer in uh, with us today or tomorrow will be able to count how many uh, atoms in the world, in the universe. In Allah, yumsiku samawati wal ard an tazula. Wala in zalata in ahab in amsakama min ahadim badi. If they, Allah is holding them not to divert, to, to demolish. And if they demolish, the whole life is gone. There is no atoms anymore. So, subhanAllah and Azim, that Allah is holding that, and he said that from 1400 years. And we didn't think about it, except nowadays when we knew about what is the structure of the creation of the, all the objects in the universe. It consists from atoms and electrons running around it. So if Allah released, when we do atomic bomb with two few pounds of uh, uranium and they split it the the scientists they put it in machines and stuff to split the atoms the energy that comes out that is holding these protons together it's horrible it destroy only a few pounds of uranium it destroyed the, 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 the cities as we know. So what about the whole Earth if it become atomic bomb? <laughs> what what the energy that would come out of that uh, uh, mass of uh, energy? It's a huge, huge, huge. You cannot imagine it even. And the Earth is nothing in the universe. Not uh, even a mosquito wing. The sun is much bigger than us. And even though the sun itself, it's nothing in the galaxy of the Milky Way. The Milky Way by itself, it's nothing beside tremendous amount of galaxies in the universe. إن الله يمسك السماوات والأرض أن تزولا ولا إن زالتا إن أمسكهما من أحد من بعد nobody can hold them after Allah just release these things to to go by its nature but he's holding them holding them in order to create me and you and the water that we drink and the, the, everything that in our lives by his mercy والله brothers when I say, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين The أنعمت عليهم I remember, I used to remember all the prophets 
whom Allah gave them miracles, 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 miracles in their lives, that we give them as example of the belief. Ibrahim والسلام, he was ejected into the hell, into the fire with a miracle. Jibreel came to him and he said, do you need help? Shall I pick you up يعني, before you fall in the hellfire, uh, in the fire? He said, from you? No. He knows what is my situation. And he doesn't need even to ask me if I need help or not. It's him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who knows what is my situation. And he doesn't need to ask me, do you need help or not? قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Allah said immediately, without any messenger or anybody, Amr, Amr means order for the fire to be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Miracles over miracles over miracles from them. Allah knows all the miracles I got, I told you about them, and there is a lot of more command that I didn't tell you guys about my miracles that in my life. And I say, subhanAllah, Allah gave me what gave the, the, the prophets. Although I am not, I am a bad person compared to if I put myself in a category and the, 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 the Sahaba, not even the prophets, I, I, I feel that I'm inferior, so inferior compared to the Sahaba. What about the prophets who got the miracles, the miracles, the miracles. And Allah gave me such miracles. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all. A'udhu billahi wa shaykhan wa rahim. Bismillah wa rahman wa rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa rahman wa rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Asallahu al azim. Rabbi al-arsh al-azim. Fain yaj'alna wa iyaakum kalm anbiya'i wa al-rusul wa al-sahabati wa al-salihin إن من عباده المخلصين تهدين الصراط المستقيم يا الله صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم مثل هؤلاء like those غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين by Allah's grace to finish finalize our life with the best deeds that we can do to make Allah سبحانه وتعالى happy from us and those Christians are Jews or any other religion that are lost in their minds and they don't know what is right and what's wrong to make them happy by this message to understand what is right and what's wrong in our life and what is really our relation with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sorry if I took a long time but Wallahi, it's miracles that we should be thinking about it in our daily life. Please, I wish every one of us to remember his eye. You say, okay, I'll cover one eye and see what's going to happen to me if I put something to cover my eye. And then I'm not going to use one hand. I'll use only one hand and see what life would be. And then I'm going to do one leg up in such a way that I don't have except one leg. And not that, only that, but if I drink water and it doesn't come out, what am I going to say? I say, oh, Allah, please, 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 relieve me, relieve me. And when I am thirsty, I say, oh Allah, please, please, please give me a cup of water. What's going on? What's going on? We drink, we eat, we sleep, we get up from sleeping. All these miracles that are around us daily, daily, daily. And we don't think about it as a miracle. We think about it as material life that we are authorized to have it. No, you are not authorized to have it except by Allah's mercy. And that's why I'm doing this lecture specifically. I call the holy hadith, but I start with Allah and He will let me say it in His name. Allah and He will be told that He will have it. Why are you here? 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 Why are you here?
برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا تقبلنا الا وانت راض عنا كل ما رضا يا رحمن يا رحيم اللهم انطق بنا في قضائك وقدرك يا كريم امين 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 وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين nice to be with you guys one day i want to introduce you to ismail he is uh, almost a half of the quran and uh, he's being uh, what is it called you're being uh, mma is like uh, what is it when you there's a sports person and they're like looking at you there's a word right when they're like looking for you scouting, scouting. mma is scouting this young man but he's uh, my nephew by the way <laughs> yeah so Ismail, inshallah, inshallah, Allah will make him a leader for this young. Ameen, ameen, ameen. All of our children, Ya Rabbi, and all the brothers and our, their children as well and their family. May Allah gather us in this life and here and then with the best. That's Allah. Okay, everyone, thank you for coming. Thank I you hope you for enjoyed it. Uh, and please make dua for me as well, yani, with you whenever you have a chance. to make dua for us, I would appreciate it. Bismillah. Jazakumullah kullu khair. Nastabdakumullah illa bila tuhi wa la'ala. Inshallah. Allah yasin. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Al